Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't lie to you, did I? The action is here, and it didn't take that long. I don't think so. And we have the St. Clair Saints versus the University of Texas Dallas roster for Overwatch 2. And the action is getting underway for the first control point map. And we already have some action underway. We have the shields going up and a lot of chaos in the middle of the map here. We have everybody trying to stay up. We already have Razor down. That's the support gone for the Saints. Emrin is struggling to stay up. May so low, getting charged into the wall now. The Saints are struggling to keep the momentum going. They have the Reinhardt shield barrier. It's so impenetrable. But now we have Baptiste just keeping everybody standing. Noxious on the rooftop being there being able to pick off anybody who dares stand in the middle of this. Gabriel, this is already very intense. A lot of heat is going out here. How are you feeling about the odds for either team so far? Uh, honestly, I'm not too sure what I should be looking for here. I mean, both team compositions seems pretty strong, right? The Bob T's being just the go-to support on literally any game of Overwatch. Uh, tanks are some interesting choices here. Oh. I mean, Sorry, that was really scary now. The Saints are, their defense, or the offense, their push is already so stopped out. Nox is going down. The University of Texas Dallas, they're holding down on this point very well. The Saints are going to have to rally up to be able to keep taking this point. But I'm sorry, Gabe, you were saying. Yeah, I was saying, uh, looking at the tanks, right, we have interesting choices. The Reinhardt on the side of Dallas versus the, oh, uh, God. It's a new character. I'm bad with new characters. <laughs> the uh, the Omnic, like the, the robot? Yeah, the Omnic guy. Hey, I forgot his name too. Punches. <laughs> All right, the Omnic. That's his name now. Um, yeah, with the Omnic with punches uh, and the, the funny staff thing that shoots. I think, is it Dot? Is it damage over time? Or is it so. just but he has his ultimate ready, and this should be Ooh. very, very powerful for the Saints. They are on the point, and they are holding it strong now. 62% for University of Ta uh, Texas Dallas. But the battle is still <laughs> ensuing. The hammer down is going to stop him in his tracks, Shred goes down, and the charge is coming out. Renaissance is a walking, just human meat grinder, turning everybody who dares challenge him into a bunch of goop. Noxious fleeing for his life now as the Saints offense is already reset yet again. And they have the ultimate now on Symmetra. The wall is gonna make things even harder for them to try poking down and pushing through. And Bastion ultimate, artillery, stopping soaks. You're missing your support. This is basically impossible here. The Saints are gonna get skunked 100 to 0% for the first uh, control point of this map and over time I'm not sure if the Saints can get to it in time. They're not even going to be able to get around that wall. But Soaks is trying so hard to skate his way through, but it's not going to work. 100 to 0% for the first round. Wow. What All went right. wrong? <laughs> what went wrong? Thank you, my uh, That's a good question. Saints definitely got locked out of the point really early on into the game. And maybe it was just a question of grouping up, right? Like sometimes you want to have a little group and then actually have those people all charge at the same time. Maybe it was just was they were getting picked off the second they were peeking their heads out, so they couldn't get that grouping up. Um, but yeah, it's just really a question of getting on that point. Once you make the space on the point, then you just need to defend. You know, you sit back, you relax, you defend. Okay, it's a little bit more stressful than that, but once you get that momentum going, it's harder for the enemy team to get it to stop, and they really felt that during that round. Especially because you can cause the confidence damage, you know, maybe they start changing out heroes, losing ultimate percent, feeling like their yep. composition is not strong enough, and that even that can slow them down. But we're here on the second point, and the Saints are coming out strong. Ramatra, Shred is going to be taking control here. Baptiste, not too far behind, keeping everybody healthy. Soaps is causing some chaos. Noxious is trying to mow them down. Nobody has gone down yet, but the, the teams really are feeling the pressure mounting. The Saints are trying to wrap around, potentially getting on this point. The barriers are so well placed by every tank in this game. Noxious being kept alive by his support, but Phone, the, the Bastion on the other team trying to take him out, pick him off, but looks like they found somebody. Razor is going to go down, getting picked off by Renaissance on the Reinhardt, and that's going to give them the opportunity to get the point. Not too much. Oh, but they're losing two. They lose a Symmetra and Bastion, giving Saints potentially the opportunity to just get through, but no, they're going to lose a capture, but Soaks and the rest of the Saints have not let up the offense just yet. Yeah, definitely a lot of action going on in these first few seconds of the match. The point almost, did it, did it get to them? Yeah, it did get to them, it did get captured. They're starting to grind those percentages right onto that point. Gonna start defending. 
Sinclair here needs to group up, needs to get themselves together, and needs to push that Ooh, point. Ooh, make my point about Oh, but the immortality field is gonna keep him up. The other's gonna be down the line, gonna do a lot of damage, but it might not go through. Razor's here to keep everybody alive. So low, he has his own barrier now. Maybe they're gonna go for the Matrix, see if they can get a really good pick off on anybody coming through, but Renes is already down. The Saints have their opportunity, and they go for it. They're gonna take their point for the first time in this match, and they're gonna be racking it up. They're gonna be able to hold it pretty well as well. No ultimates on the side of University of Texas, Dallas, but Saints already now holding two, about to be three ultimates of their own. Renaissance is struggling to even get out of this choke point here. His team's gonna have to retreat and just try to keep coming back out to keep farming the ultimate percent so maybe they can come through. Uber Eats does have the barrier on, um, has the sound barrier, gonna be able to push that through, but now Emerin and the rest of the Freeze is gonna go through. They're catching everybody. Five player kill streak and even a couple of more. The Saints are gonna get a wipe and that's gonna be a strong defense. Only committing two ultimates, I believe, now holding three on the side of the Saints. Jess Phone on the side of U University of Texas, Dallas, gonna be holding an ultimate and Kashir's soon gonna have one, but it's not too fair. It's not, maybe you'll allow them to get through that show point with that barrier, but it's not gonna be the huge. Oh, I stand correct. This is a very well-placed barrier, allowing them to hold out their own here. Not gonna get picked off from the side of the map like the Saints want to be able to do, forcing them to rotate to the side where their wall is, and that's even more cover for University of uh, Texas, Dallas. And the Saints are gonna have to recapture now as the University of Texas, Dallas was able to take it in that skirmish. Now, Saints, it's gonna be contested. Barriers coming through. Matra is fist fighting, just swinging on everybody in his way. But Soak's gonna get pushed back. He's gonna be able to get away and reset. Saints aren't able to capture that point, but they're still in this. Yeah, they gotta watch out. Really good performances on the side of the Saints on both their DPSs. We're seeing here um, both uh, Emerin and Noxious. Mm -hmm. Weiser keeping them alive, really making sure that they can get that damage in. First one person down and turn it into a... Oh, hold on here, the hammer oh. comes out. Look at his health, it's massive. So much armor, so much barrier. He's almost gonna get the pack up. There he gets it, Kashir is down there losing to Symmetra. This fight's gonna get a little bit harder now. Now they've already lost their Lucio. Barrier's gonna go up. The point is contested, it just seems to be Renaissance there. Emma's trying to get a pick off onto the Bastion on the high ground. He's gonna have to force his way up there. He's gonna get the freeze with relative ease. Gonna go down a 10 player kill streak now for him. And the Saints are gonna be able to contest this. They're gonna be able to take the point. 99% to 50. This is about as close as you can get in terms of momentum shift. No ultimates on the board now, and the Saints have to hold out to get this 100% before University of Texas. Dallas can take it back from them and win the game. Yeah, we've been seeing Emerin with the freezing. Uh, definitely, he, he plays a lot of May. He plays a lot of May. He likes too much. He, he's something. a little cold when it comes to that, but uh, definitely good on her. And Very. we can see it in his performance right now. Oh, holy oh. smokes, what is going on? The push is stopped in his tracks thanks to Noxious and the crew. A five player kill streak for him now. Team kill, in fact. And this seems to be it. For all intents and purposes, they are standing in front of their spawn. Barrier's ready. Bastion's just pouring down a rain of bullets into their spawn. And they already have ultimates coming up. They have Baptiste and they have Bastions and they also have Emrins. It's going to be near impossible for them, but they have to try and make it work regardless. Noxious is getting healed up by Razor. Bone is trying to lay out as much damage as he can, but the overtime is going in the Saints' favor. They find oh, him. They the take land. out the Bastion. They're one hope to keep them in this game. Renaissance is going down low, 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 and he is dead. Another team kill for the Saints. And that's going to be the first point for the Saints oh, in this one, map. One. All right, really good. All right, so we saw round one was completely Dallas sided, like just completely. And now, match two, we see St. Clair starting to pick up some momentum. Are we seeing like a, a reverse river sweep or here or something like that, maybe? <laughs> but like just as easily as we saw that first game go the way of University of Texas Dallas the Saints were able to show that they still have what it takes to compete they still uh, are able to adapt I feel like they found their flow I feel like in that first game University of Texas was able to like we said just completely stop the momentum in the tracks but what the Saints were able to do were they were able to adapt in a way that allowed them to 
more or less recuperate that lost momentum and Provides play around it. And that's exactly what they're doing here. And they're going to have to do more of it as we get onto this third point. And it all comes down to this one here. Renaissance now playing Sigma Barrier. Yeah, the ability on this map to put the barriers a lot further away from you uh, is going to be valuable to hold off these choke points. But Shred is going to advance forward with the Smash Teleport with the rest of the team. They're going to be able to try to find one pick off the phone. is going to get should be alive. That should be Bastion. It's a tale as old as time itself, but Noxious is going to lose that one. We have Sheer on the Soldier 76, getting the flank. He's able to keep himself nice and healthy, but he's going to get pushed off of his own heel, and now he's facing a little bit of punishment. Now Soaks roaming around with the rest of the team. Lucio's mobility is just playing such a huge role in their ability to stay in this fight. They're going to teleport up and try to route them from behind, but no, you lost your Baptiste. You don't like that. They still have Lucio, but he does not. His heels aren't that potent. It's more of a passive thing. They're going to try picking off Cashier, but it's not going to work for them. The University of Texas Dallas, they met amidst the chaos, is able to take the point. It's on Saints now to retake it. They are able to find the stragglers from the Dallas side push, get them off, and then take the point. This is going to be a lot closer. I can tell already 16% of the Saints have already taken it back, but Texas, they want to come back and they want to fight for it. So we're just getting started, and I can already feel the intensity picking up. Yeah, here they're definitely looking to try and get back into the game, into the match, trying to get those picks, grouping up, getting that one kill, right? One kill is all it takes when it comes to Overwatch. Well, I mean, pretty much any competitive game. Once you turn the game into a 4v5 instead of a 5v5, you have the advantage, and that's what you look for every single time. Exactly. And oh, going for the ultimate, finds a gravity wall, lifts one up, and they're going to be able to take down Razor as a result of that. The Saints are going to have a lot harder time keeping this one in their favor, but it's not impossible. Renaissance is so tanky, and he's being such a problem for them, but the Saints are still holding up to this point. Noxious now, seeing if he can find any pickoffs. They're going to find Renaissance, and they're going to take him down. Soak's going to be able to knock him out to keep him in, away from this. But there may soaks and the rest of the team the saints are fighting tooth and nail to get them off of this point and it's getting it looks to be working for them they already pushed them off and the saints are still able to maintain control of the point 60 percent to the university of texas dallas is still 16. yeah that's a little bit uh, a little bit far away from each other so they're gonna have to make sure that they get onto that point we can see them stopping around the tank composition trying to make things uh, just a different strategy, a different angle of approach we're seeing here. A Farah, a Tracer. So Farah, Mercy, Tail has all this time also. Uh, we see that all the time. The Kiriko coming out. Uh, the cleanse here, is there a Ooh. Of the Ooh, he commits the ultimate. Really just wanted to get rid of Razor there, and it works. But Noxus is going to be able to take out Kashir immediately after. But the Mercy oh, going to no. get the revive, but it's not going to be for free. As Noxus looks to get the kill off it, but it's not going to be able to find it. Trying to just smite them out of the sky. And again, University of Texas Dallas is able to capture the point while they are able to keep the Saints back. Tracer's mobility is proving to be a problem for the Saints, keeping the relatively squishy and vulnerable damage players on St. Clair College always on their toes, threatening the pickoffs. Phones, Tracer is a huge issue for them right now. They're going to have to find some way to deal with it. 95% is nothing to scoff at, but if you're not able to find an answer soon, it's going to be troubling. Emran switching to uh, Sombra. Ooh, that's an interesting choice. I haven't like actually seen... Like, how do her abilities work after the rework? I know it's kind of old, but... I think she still, of course, can hack people. She well, still yeah. doesn't really teleport. But other nuances, oh my lord, Wrecking Ball <laughs> is on the side. Not Wrecking, it's just keeping everybody off of it, spinning around, doing a whole load of damage. But the Saints are still fighting Soaps, proving to be an issue, getting the point back for the Saints. And the boops, very effective at doing so. Razor and the rest of the Saints keeping their feet planted on the point, and they're gonna take this first game in the series against the University of Texas Dallas in a very hard fought match. Yeah, most definitely a reverse river sweep, as we can see here. Uh, Dallas takes the first round. Seclair said, all right, we see how you play. Now we're gonna do better. <laughs> And they just said, all right, round two, you can see it. It was touch and go. Everybody was kind of duking it Look out. Okay, we'll that. see how it goes. Oh, yeah, that was beautiful. You couldn't ask for a better lineup there. Just wow. a shooting gallery, Ooh. basically. Very well played by the Saints. They that worked was for that. But insane. Hey, Gabriel, Christmas came earlier this year. We got some League of Legends action. Uh, I can see I can see you salivating looking at the draft here. You want to break this down for me? How do you see this going for all right, the team so here? So on the St. Clair Saints side, we're seeing a Rumble Top classic. 
Zack in the jungle, which is actually kind of interesting. Haven't seen that much Jack. Uh, bleh, Jacks. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, Zack in the jungle. Um, That's something from back in my day. Yeah. Back when I was playing League, I saw I saw Zack in the jungle a bit. I, mean, I didn't think people still did that. He's still, like, his main role is still jungle. It's just he's not really, like, as predominant in the meta. Corky mid. Yep, that's, yep, yep, that's meta right now. Malignant's combo is very <laughs> strong. Although Malignant no longer has that interaction with Eclipse where it counts as a stack for that shield. Um, so we're going to see how that works out if he's still going to build the Eclipse. Caitlyn Karma in the bot lane. Karma picked up a nerf lately um, onto her Q. She went from 70% damage with the Mantra Q down to 50% damage uh, of her AP, of course. Ooh. So, yeah, significant nerf, but it's still a large amount of damage that you have to watch out for. That base damage being the biggest problem um, in the early game, of course. And then on the side of Brooklyn College, we have the Malphite top. Pretty staple, although not really good into a rumble, mm. right? You usually want to build that armor. Uh, rumble being very good at shredding tanks with his percentage of health damage and with his poke. Um, and plus, it's magic damage. So against Malphite, not the best of ideas. Um, forcing your opponent out of your comfort zone is a very valuable thing to yeah, do. Just that is true. forcing the fear off of the regular item build path can cause a lot of problems for not even just their game plan, but even the team's game plan. Maybe they wanted to rely on the heavily armored Malphite for a lot of different resources, maybe to just soak up everything that the, the enemy team has to throw at them. But now that they have to play around that, it could cause some issues. Yeah, definitely. And you can see it. Magic damage, magic damage, magic damage. AD with the ADC, and then more magic damage. That's a lot of magic damage, so that's a <laughs> lot of armor that Malphite just can't build, right? And that's damage he can't have, unless it's an AP Malphite, but I'd be surprised. Uh, yeah, Sin Zhao in the jungle. Uh, pretty strong pit lately. Uh, probably going to opt for a more of like a bruiser slash lethality build going mm -hmm. off on Eclipse, something like that. Lissandra in the mid lane. We all love our CC mages. Lissandra is the epitome of that. Uh, Ezreal and Rockon in the bot lane. Not what I would have expected. I assumed that the Rockon was picked and the Zaya was probably banned out. Um, but yeah. Oh, hold on here. We're going to tank at the top lane. Malphite getting doved at level 3. Has to flash out of his tower's range. A lot oh. of flashes there. Okay, we have the flash coming out of uh, Rumble 2 to get that first blood, which is not bad, but hold on here. Since I was going to respond from the top gang with a bot game, but it just doesn't work. They see him on a ward, and that will not be an effective one. Uh, as we can see here, Malphite having to dedicate his TP to get back in lane to make sure he doesn't miss out on a wave. Rumble opting for the first strike build. Um, so he's going to get a lot of money off of that, of course, with the percentage of health damage. You just, you gain money based off the amount of damage you deal, which just means that Malphite is free money. Um, yeah. uh, in the previous games, especially the ones that you've casted, oh, actually, I sent some action going on here again, coming through Princeton and the rest of the Brooklyn College squads are going to pick off the Saints. Pierso is going to go down. Great Gorilla seems to be safe for now, but that's going to be some mental damage done at the very yeah. least watching your ADC go down. Yeah, the, and the Ghost was popped, which is not ideal. The Ghost going off on the ADC means they can't really run down as much uh, in an engage, so that's going to be crucial. Uh, but yeah, looking at how this goes, we're going to swap over to Overwatch and what is going on here. Seems that the cart is going to be a hard defense point for University of Texas, Dallas. They don't have, they want to make sure that the Saints don't get anywhere near it. If this is your first time seeing this game mode, the Saints have a limited amount of time to capture the point, and then they have to push that point all the way to the end. Um, but right now, we're still in that first phase where the Saints have to capture that point, and there's two uh, very, actually more so three very deadly choke points on this map, but even more deadly is the offense that the Saints are putting down. They lose their tank, but they don't lose their spirit. University of Texas Dallas is now giving them chase. Noxious is next to go down. The rest of the states are just going to fall back and wait for their allies to respawn while just doing a little bit of poking. Um, but like I said, three very deadly choke points here. You have that first one at the start, that's kind of split into two, and then you have one on the left after they get past that bridge, and then one on the right. Very, very choke heavy, so you're going to see a lot of 
very abusable Bastion plays coming out here. Barriers are going to be very effective right now. Uh, both Sigmas, or one Sigma here, pushing them through. Emran's going to find a nice pick off on that turret. It's doing a lot of poking. Freeze is up. It is available, but I don't think they want to commit it just yet. Lost three of their members. They're going to have to oh, be yeah. patient hold off on things until they have the perfect opportunity to use it. A big part of these games, people might think it's just aiming, it might just be mobility and mechanical stuff like this, but the biggest part of uh, hero-based shooters, a lot of it is timing. Um, knowing when to do your play, when to go for it, and to maximize the effectiveness of it. And even just knowing Bastion now has the ultimate, this might not be the time, because Bastion can sit comfortably back, he's not going to be in the midst of anything and be able to capitalize, but he's going to go for it now, the freeze is going to come off, Emran's going to try to stay alive, but he's so he has to hide behind the cart, and he's gonna get picked off by the Torbjorn. The sound barrier is gonna be committed. Uber East is gonna the rest of the team is super healthy. Immortality field is gonna get pushed out of the range of it. Noxious is gonna go down, and then the Saints are all gonna be pushed back on their back foot, needing to retreat yet again. That push was very convincing, but it's ultimately gonna fail. Shred is trying to hold the line here. Have is very close to his ultimate himself, and the rest of the Saints might get there, but Soaks is gonna go down. Any plan that they had to keep momentum going is gonna die alongside him. Now, Earthrider is available, and you have no choice but to go back and wait for your Lucio to respawn. Barrier's really low on Renaissance. He's going to have to be forced to sit back and wait until it's going to be recoupable. But again, with the Earth Shatter, this push is not going to be very easy for the Saints. He's going to come around the corner, see if he can find it. He's going to commit for it, the finds soldier. Emran only, but the Saints are going to retaliate, stun him up, but Immortality Field, the Gravity Well is going to pick up the, ba the Baptiste. He's going to be out of this fight. This is looking to be very favorable for the Saints as long as they can hold it together not lose any more members. They have both of their supports available. It shouldn't be too hard. And just like that, one by one, University of Texas Dallas falls to the very strong, overwhelming force that the Saints were able to push through with that pickoff. And just like that, we're into phase two. The Saints have to make that push to the end of the point or get as far as they can before time runs out. Yeah, well, that definitely makes things a lot harder. If you can keep them off the cart, you I mean, your job is, mwah, you did a perfect job. But once that cart starts moving, things start getting a lot harder. The objective is moving, which means you need to move too, right? So the Saints need to be moving at all times, or at least be on that objective. On the side of League of Legends here, still one and two, so not much action going on. But we do have a gank in the mid lane. It's a 2v2 here. Lissandra having to pull to her ultimate, trying to get into stasis, not going to get killed. Ooh, hold on here. The Sin Zhao is maybe a little bit too deep. Has to pop the ultimate to try and negate the damage from the Corky. But the Corky no flashes onto way. Lissandra. Lissandra does get away. Sin Zhao with the double kill on both Zach and Corky. Rumble showing up, trying to get the kill. Does end up getting the Lissandra. Flashes out of the fight. But Sin Zhao will also dedicate his flash and pick up the triple kill. Bottom uh, side now, there's some action, but it's not as intense as the action we're seeing now in Overwatch. Very, very scary thing we just saw there in League of Legends. I'm going to pick your brain about what you just saw there. But for now, we have a Bastion cooking up an ultimate. Tread made the switch to Ramatra just at the end of that last push or saw before we switch over to League of Legends. Soaks looping the Bastion out of position, forcing him to relocate and reposition. The Mortality Field is going to keep the rest of them still healthy. Phone's going to find Emran, but he's going to slide to safety. Now, it's on the Saints to just maintain the pressure. Don't crumble. Renaissance is going to charge. He's not going to find anybody there. A little heartbreaking. Phone is in the trenches. If anyone can find him, that'd be a great pickoff, but they're not going to be able to take the opportunity for it. Doi is going to go down, and this soaks on the Lucio. Oh, and the Razor is going to find the pickoff. Everybody on the side of University of Texas Dallas goes down, except for the Lucio, able to slip out, presumably. But the Saints were doing so well in that exchange, able to just snuff out the fire that University of Texas Dallas' ape was trying to start. But charging through, now he's just gonna, all he's going to get out of that is taking a lot of damage. Hammer's going to go down. It's not going to find anybody, I believe. And even if it did, it's not going to be any follow-up. The Ice Field is going to go down. They find Shred. They're going to charge him right off the map. Very, very, very well timed. Very well played. But Soaks is still fighting out of his mind. Wall riding and sliding, trying to make sure that the action is not going to end here. He's fighting for his life, and the Saints are coming to support him. He's going to go right back behind them and keep hiding. Renaissance charges forward.
and puts the shield up. We are in the midst of chaos, ladies and gentlemen. The fighting won't stop anytime soon. The Saints want to get them off this point. Oh Soaks with my. six HP is going to oh. go down eventually, and his body's going to fall into the pit, never to be seen again, but he's going to be back and better than ever soon enough as the action still on the side of the Saints, but Vermacho with the ultimate, holding it in. It's, he's going to have to unleash it at some point, letting it through. He's going to find Renaissance with that and keep punching until somebody goes down. He's flexing his muscles. He's taking it. He's letting them do whatever they want, but they're not going to be able to take him down. He still has both of his supports available, and the Saints are able to wipe University of Texas Dallas off of the cart and push through to the next checkpoint. Wow. I know he's a tank, but like... Man, that boy tanky. <laughs> very, very dangerously tanky. As again, we saw with the ultimate now on Bastion, the artillery. This could be a very clean clear for the Saints. They just have to find the right moment, the right timing to get the uh, side of University of Texas Dallas in a choke hold. And that might not be too difficult as they are coming out to spawn. They go for the artillery strike. It's going to do a lot of damage, but no pickoffs just yet. Soaks is going to go down and miss the chaos through the grenade from phone. And the Saints are going to have to be slowly pushed back. They don't want to lose too many because every second you're alive, every second you're doing damage, rolling around healing is ultimate percentage. And like I said, everything about this game is timing. You want to make sure you can get With your junk as fast as possible. Junkrat is going to be picked up by Kashir. In a point of the map like this, being able to just lay down and, and lob out grenades is very valuable. Not if you're going to get picked off from behind from the tank of the Yikes. enemy team, knocking him out, and their tank is going to go down too. You just have three members left alive to hold this. It's not going to be very easy for them. The Saints are going to get significant push on this cart. It's not going to be enough to win them the game just yet. 99% of the ultimate charge on Renaissance, and Emra is going to have the ultimate of his own now, and I've seen Personally, firsthand, what he can do with that is ultimate. He the chandelier? He is swinging from the chandelier. I did not even go there. Okay. <laughs> he's going to go for it. He's going to commit the ultimate, trying to get as much damage off as he can. Hammer down is going to go down, but he's going to be doing so much damage. He's going to deter the push out from the University of, uh, University of Texas Dallas. They were all forced to wait in the foyer. They couldn't even come out to follow up. Renaissance is a one man army, but they're going to find that fire wave onto Emrin, like picking up a fly with chopsticks. And amidst all of that, the Saints, were they able to get the final push? I think they ran out of time there. That's, yeah, Just what barely, yeah. Looked like it. Uh, very well played by the Saints. They're not able to go all the way, but they made a very strong push. And it's going to be quite difficult for University of Texas Dallas to match it. I look forward to seeing how they're going to go about trying to do that. Yeah. But we're back to your home here, your territory. Home sweet home. The last thing we saw there was a, a series of ganks going off, and that the momentum shift that those potentially could have caused. Are you seeing any ripple effects of what we saw before uh, we came and now we're seven back? 7-0 Sinzao. Why is Sinzao 7-0? He got three kills. Mm. I guess those snowballed. Uh, so yeah, Sinzao has his uh, Titanic Hydra already, which is terrifying to say the least. Uh, having to deal with uh, full item Sinzao. With, oh, hold on here. They're going to fight for the drag here. Lissandra dedicating her flash. Going to get the three-man root. Going to try and... Oh, hold on here. She flashes out again. Trying to get outside of the fight. There is too much damage going into this. Since now going to pick up the double kill onto that Zack. Lissandra oh. here getting away with the grass. So close. But the... Yeah, she she leaves. Sin Zhao the, came the back with a vengeance, oh, finding the rumble that was chasing down the survivors. It's just Smurfy and Hualp left. Codito and Grey Gorilla, they don't want to give this dragon up. I respect their scrappiness here. It's just two versus oh? three, but they are committing for this. Oh, they the found that! Unbelievable! Grey Gorilla is a god! He's not... not uh, He's not an invincible god, but they were at least able to get that pick off, and that is in a game like this where you're facing oh, down no. the, the barrel of the gun of a seven. Oh, oh I thought they got that. I thought that was close. Still, that was very close. Uh, wow. Staring down the barrel of a gun of a 7 0 Zin Zhao. Any, any kill you can get is going to be very valuable. We're back to Overwatch here. Ooh, and University been. of Texas Dallas, they are proving my statement before wrong. They're looking to make this first capture very easy here. Already getting one pip of the cap. That's going to be a permanent marker now. They just only have to get two more. But Shred is going to go back and just start knocking people out, knocking people away as well. Seeing if you can get any pickoffs. Trying to get that. 
Uh, Symmetra, she's gonna go down eventually. Baptiste. Oh, is he just <laughs> just toying with him? In fact, that actually is a strat. You want to keep the support alive as long as possible before you kill them. They have no way of getting out. You just let them stay alive as long as you can, so then that delays their respawn oh. with their team. Again, so the timing. team needs to wait. Exactly. I see. Okay, that's big brain. It's all timing, my friend. All timing. And now we reset once again. Tread just laying down the fire, but the. University of Texas Dallas, they're going to be able to get the teleportation up with Smesher, I believe. Emrin holding them up on the left side. It's just a ring game of ring around the rosy with much higher stakes as they just rotate around this one central building and potential for pushing through. I hear the Baptiste barrier is going to go down and the Saints are going to have to retaliate in kind. Tread trying his best to stay alive and be a, a unshakable pillar on this point. Barrier is going to go down and he's going to throw out the voodoo field. At least that's what I'd like to call it. And the push is not over yet for University of Texas They're going to be delayed slightly, but they are still fighting. The delay is, is a huge part of the Saints' plan, right? You want to make sure that even if you're going to be fighting, you don't want to overcommit. You don't want to keep chasing. They do eventually pull back and go back to the point, make sure that nobody's going to be get sneaky, but the barrier's going to go down, and Tread's going to commit the ultimate. Now he's fighting, he's trying to stay alive, but the immortality field is going to go picked off. Tread is going to go down. The Saints lose their tank. Oh, no. The sound barrier is already worn, worn away. They're going to take the point, and the Saints are just going to have to try retreating. Phone is going to get the fire wave to take out Soaks, and the Saints lost that point a lot faster than I believe University of Texas Dallas did, and now it's on them to play the defense. Yeah, that defense is going to be a lot harder to play around with that payload moving, but they have to keep in mind that they need to stay grouped, they need to get those picks, right? Here, possibly, I don't know, a backline Junkrat was something that was really good to get those early game, or the, like those early round picks, right? Um, trying to just get them out of one of their players being essential here, but maybe not the ideal play, um, depending on how you want to play this one. We're seeing a lot of Bastions, and the Bastion, granted the ultimate isn't what you play him for, right? You play him for the DPS that he can just bring to the table at, in one instance, in one ability. Um, but, oh, hold on here, the teleport going up. That they, could be huge. They are getting behind the Saints defense here, but in fact, no, they recognize it and they mirrored it. This is a huge concept in these hero-based shooters, to be able to mirror the position of your enemy to make sure they don't have any advantage over you. Emerson's going to find pick up on Doi with his ult, but the hammer now is going to go down. Beautiful. They're going to have Tread, and Renaissance is going to get Fire Wave off onto the Immortality Field, I believe. The, oh, the... the, the, the is that the snowfield? No, it looked like it, but they're gonna find a uh, razor. He's gonna go down. Another support gone for the Saints. Soaks getting picked off. Five player kill streak from Kashir. And he has the barrier to keep the push going if necessary. Bone is still alive as well. They have both the supports now. One of them just responding, I believe. They're gonna make their way back to the front lines. The Saints are losing a lot of their defensive uh, line, but they're still fighting tooth and nail. They're trying to get on the high ground here, getting from behind too, but they're going to teleport into that hidey hole so they can fight against them a little bit better. The Saints are going to have the high ground, but oh no, Lucio! He got a little bit too overzealous there, and they're going to pay for it. Throwing out that field, Soaks is going to get ambitious and see if he can pick off, the, but the Ray, Ranhart recognizes it, goes back, but he's going to go down regardless. The supports aren't able to keep him alive. The barrier is doing a lot of work in making this a lot harder for the states, the teleportation field is going to go down. They're not going to be able to keep going back and forth anymore. Shred is looking to be a shred filled beast in the trenches down here. He's going to find so many pickoffs there, and even the ones he didn't get, they were basically made possible with his muscles. And that's going to be basically a team wipe for the side of St. Clair College. They only a minute and 30 left for University of Texas Dallas. They're going to have to find it within themselves to make this push possible. Four ultimates on the side of St. Clair College. One is coming up for University of Texas Dallas, and then shortly after that, you're going to have Baptiste and Lucio getting theirs. But again, with this timing, it's going to be very difficult to find the moment that they can pick off the Saints and then use those ultimates to capitalize off of any mistakes that are made, especially when you have Soaks getting pickoffs like that on Kashir. Razor is going to go down forever. He's going to have to be forced to commit the sound barrier. This could be the moment that University of Texas Dallas is looking for. They're going to go for the ultimates of their own. The Hymer is going to go down. I don't think it caught anybody, though. The Archer is going to take out Noxious, however. 
State's missing their own Bastion, but they're still in the fight for sure. Tread is gonna find a pick up, but he get charged into the wall. Every second he's not firing, there is a second in the favor of University of Texas Dallas. He didn't get the kill, but he was able to stop and relocate him. Doi is gonna go down though. Uh, Reinhardt was pushed up a little bit too far, and now he's gonna go down. The supports were left behind in his ambitious wake of destruction, and 30 seconds left with three down, and them just respawning with still ultimates on the side of the Saints. This looks to be where the card is gonna stay for this game. 20 seconds left, it's gonna be a miracle if University of Texas Dallas is gonna be able to pull this one off. Yeah, definitely hard to pull this one off with 15 seconds left. Here they're trying, yeah, they're getting camped right in that little hidey hole. Oh, they do get to the point. They want to keep pushing it so they at least get the overtime there. I believe they will, but while they're stuck in this this little shop, it looks to be quite definitive, and the players yeah. leaving kind of just cements it down. The Saints take their second game of this match in a very convincing, and I want to say confident manner. They were able to take that one. It felt like they were able to play their game and play it their way, and this play of the game might show us exactly, highlight how they kind of capitalize off of it. In the chaotic moments like this, where everything is kind of crumbling down, even getting the heal mid-air on his team to keep them alive, and then continue wow. the offense, getting the stragglers and getting them quickly. It's, that's what separates the strong from the weak in this game, I believe. Yeah, 100% here, and as we can see, the rock gun coming up into the top lane to assist the Lissandra. Zed, or Zach, doing the exact same here. We're having a skirmish in the top lane. Oi, guys, it's an island. Nobody's supposed to show up top lane. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> they didn't get the memo. <laughs> no, they didn't get the memo. Uh, but yeah, definitely surprising with this new season, actually seeing people show up in the top lane. It's nice to get some company. We have visitors, fine. <laughs> get to ask our junglers how it's going, you know? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure the Malphite's having a great time talking to his jungler, who is now 14 and one. Oh yeah. He He's doubled his now. kills. All right, that's, True. yeah, this is, this is fine. Look at uh, that bounty, 700 gold, that's not, nothing to spot that, you know? Oh, no, definitely not it here. Seems our Caitlyn is quite a far ahead in terms of farm of their oh, Ezreal, but there's gonna be a skirmish going down here. Our Rumble's in trouble to the Jin Zhao. We're looking at 15 kills now, plus a shutdown. I think that was a bounty pickup of his own on the Jin Zhao. Great Gorilla just pushing them back a little bit. Not really gonna be very effective, but forcing them back at the very least. Yeah, definitely not ideal here when we're looking at that Fedson's out. He has his thundered sky. He has the resistance from the and the tenacity from the wit's end, right? Tenacity being a huge factor here. Uh, wit's end having tenacity is so important because it gets rid of all that CC. Hold on here, first strike going oh, off here. the Corky, popping the Valkyrie onto the Lissandra. Lissandra going to go into stasis, not going to fall. Corky does end up dying here. The Caitlyn does pick up the Rock on right into that fight. Airborne Ooh. goes the Zac. Zao getting the Caitlyn, getting the triple kill onto that Karma. Is that a quadruple kill? No. Ezreal <laughs> picks up the kill onto the Zac, but that is almost an ace there. Uh, I mean, it's a practical ace. The, the 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 rumble died a little bit earlier, so yeah. yeah. Here that will definitely translate into a Baron, uh, three man Baron too. All right, we don't even need the Lissandra. I mean, considering how fed this and Zhao is, definitely possible. So we're learning a lot about Brooklyn College here. They're, they're strong. strong. <laughs> they're really strong, um, or at least their jungler is right now. Because yeah, uh, what what is he? 18? Yeah, 18 and one right now. Uh, so really strong in their early game plays. Here, St. Clair wants to let that Corky scale. Corky is 0-5 right now. He needs to get his items up online. He only has a Monomune and an Eclipse plus multiple boots. So he needs to get that Milligans, get that magic resist um, shredded. Because all of his team deals magic damage, aside from the Caitlyn. And we can see that right now, right? Merc Treads were purchased um, on two, yeah, two of the champions. And then all the rest is Lucy Boots, right? So there's Ability Haze going around. There's Tenacity going around. For mages, that's not ideal, right? Uh, lack of CC2 on the side of St. Clair College. If yeah, we're looking at the comp, very committal on the side. Basically, they just have to sack, and that's like one stun, really. Yeah, there's like maybe like the karma rotation max. It's, it's really hard to try to nail down a target and just pour all the damage they need to it, especially right now. They don't have that damage. I don't know. Nope. Well, it's, it's a it's damage based comp that doesn't have damage. Exactly. They, don't, they, they never got to farm. They want to burst, yeah. but they can't. And then the most valuable target probably has more HP than all of them combined. 
Yeah. So what do you what do you do? <laughs> yeah, definitely hard to do things here. We're seeing the uh, oh, crit well. Caitlyn come out instead of a lethality. A lethality being usually the build right now, given the fact that it is so strong. Uh, so really interesting to see a lethality Caitlyn coming out. The Karma doing a pretty standardized build here with the Imperial Mandate, but definitely an interesting development here as St. Clair College starts defending their bot lane turret from those cannons, those cannons with Baron buff, dealing so much damage. Oh my god, still living with one health. That is so much damage on the turret. The tur Will the turret fall? Nice yeah, I think dude. one more auto attack from the cannon and the turret does end up falling. Sin Zhao here trying to go onto the engage oh, will end up getting rooted by the Karma, but don't worry about that because Rockon has the four man airborne. Rumble, the equalizer does end up coming out, shut down onto the Malphite, but Ezreal will find the pick back. It is now a 4v4, oh, 3v4. Bot lane inhibitor turret will fall, the inhibitor soon after, and this will be devastating to St. Clair College. Devastating might be an understatement here. I feel like this might be where they end. The push from Brooklyn College proving to be very, very effective, and nothing the Saints were really able to accomplish in retaliation. But maybe things are going better on the side of the Saints for Overwatch, and it looks to be the case. Our varsity team making a very strong start off, getting 38% on this first point here. But just as I say that, Texas Dallas is able to take it back. Uh, they still have their bash with 70%, 93 on their Lucio, so they're not to, they're not starving for ultimate percent either, but this point it could really go either way as both teams are looking get, to get ready for their next confrontation. Yeah, definitely going to be important here to keep in mind what they're doing and to stay grouped here. As we can see, St. Clair not in the biggest of groups, not really staying together. So they need to make sure that they stay together, they group up, and that they may let their healers heal them, right? You need to make sure that you don't get picked off because you're too far away from your healer. <laughs> Look at him. This, he's just melting. It's shameless. He's just melting the barricade. There's nothing they can do, but he's going to get knocked into the wall and take a hammer hit. He's still really strong, really healthy. He's going to be doing the punching. A very weak barrier on the side of that Reinhardt now, thanks to that mow down. And the Saints are able to get the confidence to make the run of the point, forcing University of Texas Dallas back. And the Reinhardt was melting there, going to get teleported out a rescue mission from the Symmetra, but he's the Saints side, they are in favor right now, holding the point, and they're trying to just batten down the hatches, so to speak, just put down everything that they can and make it as difficult as possible, dig their heels in, make it very difficult for uh, University of Texas to come back, and look at that. They are kind of even struggling to find an angle of attack here with 80% left, just a couple percent away from their own. The barrier is going to go down, and the Saints are going to be looking for a vulnerability, but looks like they're going to find vulnerability on the side of Texas Dallas. They're going to take down Emran and Shred, uh, and that's going to be a very easy pick uh, back by University of Texas Dallas. It's so close, and everybody's scrambling to get back on point. 98% Shred has his ultimate, but the first flashpoint goes aside of University of Texas Dallas. They just need two more, I believe, to win this game, but the Saints are still in this. They have their ultimate, so they're going to be able to probably convincingly take this next one and at least establish a lead if they decide to commit it, and even better if they don't need to commit anything. But again, with those timings in mind, it might be worthwhile to just completely stomp out the offense and lay a strong defense from the get-go or see what they can get away with. But what they're going to have to decide is yet to be seen. Yeah, as we can see here, Emmer doing a really good job at holding those like weird angles and getting that DPS done on the supports, on the DPSs, okay, keeping them on their toes, telling them, hey, by the way, I exist, I'm a threat, and you can't push right now. Um, so really good pressure on that side here. As we see the Symmetra just getting those teleports in, getting her team where they need to be to take the Ooh. point. The hammer coming down. But they're gonna protect Nauseous as best they can. He's gonna go down regardless. But as a retaliation, they find the supports on the side of University of Texas Dallas. There's so many bodies going down here. It's even hard to keep track of. Phone was so low, escaped, but is gonna get taken down by Tread, chasing him back. The Saints, I don't think they commit any ultimates there unless. No, they didn't. They didn't. Oh, no. Emran used his ultimate oh, yeah. for sure. Um, but. Other than that, they didn't really. And Renaissance had to commit his ultimate, um, but I don't think there was any other ultimates for University of Texas Dallas to commit. And with 50%, Saints with the ultimate lead, Razor about to get his own. I don't think University of Texas Dallas is going to want to commit ultimates anyways because this point's kind of a lost cause. They might just kind of 
push and see what they can get away with, but I don't think they're banking on getting this point back. Not from the Saints. No, I think here it's just kind of a question of, you know what, we're, we're going to deal our damage, but we're not going to dedicate any ultimates just right to play. make sure that we keep our alt economy up and running, and then they're going to try and focus onto the next point here, but we can see they're really trying to get in there. Uh, going to Ooh. get the pin onto the Emrin, that is, that is devastating. And just like that, the Saints are still holding these points over time. University of Texas Dallas, seeing if they can force out any ultimates, and they're successful in doing so. A couple committed by the Saints. I don't know if that's exactly what they were looking for. The Barry's going to go down and make this even better for him, but they're going to take the Immortality Field, make things harder, putting out the Curse, punching his way to victory, it seems. The supports are doing such a good job keeping him alive, keeping him healthy. The Barry's going to go down, and just like that, Noxious is going to find the pick off on Renaissance. The Saints are going to be looking to get this pick off in their way. Overtime is still the name of the game. And <laughs> this Lucio is making it so tedious, so irritating, but the slow is gonna make him vulnerable and the Saints are gonna get that flash point. And as I say that, uh, with the multi-view, I was able to see the game is going to go the way of Brooklyn College. Try to see if I can peek out what the final score was for that Zinzao. It was 19 to 1. Uh, as to 6 assists. So 19 kills on the Zinzao at the end of that game. Yeah, I don't know, Chief. I'm pretty sure that's not supposed to happen. I don't um, think so. I think somebody... Uh, who, uh, it's, not, it, it's not Thanksgiving, right? No, but it might be... It might be Christmas in some parts of the world. I'm not sure, but that Zinzao was a gift from the heavens oh, if he was the side of Brooklyn College. But back to action here on the side of Overwatch. The Saints leading 2-0 in this series and 1-1 in this game. Both teams just need two more flash points to win the game. Alt Artillery is going to get committed. That Siren is going to warn anybody in their way to retreat. Our Mortality Field is going to get picked off and the Bastion or the Baptiste Barrier is is going to be laid down for the Saints, but the retaliation one from the University of Texas, he's going to be forced to endure, take as much damage as he can, and then pour it back in his own way. But Emrin in a very good position here with the ultimate two. He might just slide out and go for it. In fact, I can feel it coming. I feel that he wants to. He sees the supports. He sees the moment. Is he going to commit for it? Yes. No, that's not the ultimate, but he is going to get the pick off on Uber East with that huge beam. Menacellus is going to get the pin on somebody. He's pushing them far away. Not going to get the kill, though, and just committing the beam again to get cashier. It's going to be another wipe for the Saints. The only survivor is going to be Uber Eats on the Lucio, able to skip his way out. The Saints are going to take the point and start racking up the percentage after an excellent pickoff and maneuver from Emeryn. Yeah, Emeryn's performance today has been stellar, both on the May, on the uh, Sojourn. It's just really, really getting those picks, those angles, good ultimates, Zoning well, as we see here. Yeah, Bastion Ultimate coming down. Just trying to get some, like, zoning damage, I guess, down. Bastion doesn't really deal a lot of damage with his ultimate, does he? Not really. It's more so forcing to be positioned is the value of the part, I would assume. Um, making your opponent get out of their comfort zone and maybe even run right into another one of your traps is a very valuable thing indeed. Just like picking up Doi on the Baptiste. The Saints are 99%, now 100, 2-1. to one. Next Flashpoint wins them the game. The Saints are feeling the pressure again. Every single game, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want. To, I don't want to let it seem like the Saints are rolling here. It's 2-0, but every single game was a hard-fought battle. University of Texas Dallas. Again, the Saints have seen them many times before and have always given them a strong fight. And today is no different. I think that they want the win, and they're going to do everything in their power to get it. But again, ultimate economy. We're going to bring it up one more time here. Tread and Silks are going to have both of their ultimates, and it might come out very soon. Razor's already going to use his. Kashir Doi is not even going to be opportunity to use as he goes down. They're going to find the Lucio. They're going to find the Baptiste. They're going to find the Semester. They're going to find the, the Reinhardt, and they're going to find the Bastion. They're going to find the team kill, and they're going to find the empty point as the Saints get their first percentage on this next and potentially final flashpoint in this game three. Yeah, very explosive fight there as almost all the ultimates were dedicated. Actually, I'm saying this, but now I realize that most of the ultimates are actually back up. They, they That fight lasted long enough for everybody to get their ult back. <laughs> Basically, uh, Tread is trying to just 
Again, play off much damage. Him. The Baptiste Barrier is going to go down. Barrier from the side of the Ramatra is going to go up as well. But they're going to find a huge, meaty hammer swing to take him out. And University of Texas Dallas is going to take this point. Now, going to be charging into the wall there. Maybe just he had a, a knot in his shoulder he wanted to loose and just no, bash it real quick. Wall, very big target. you got to make sure you hit the wall. Because mm -hmm. if you don't hit the wall, right? Got to keep it in what, check. Yeah, yeah. It's... Uh, there could be a Symmetra turret on it. There could be a Symmetra hiding inside the wall. Oh but no, they're in the walls. <laughs> that's a new tech, new strategy. Always gotta be on your toes. Opponents can find very clever ways to get behind your lines. But the Saints, they're not gonna rely on anything cheap. Any new tactics, just brute force. They're gonna push up with the artillery. He's coming up from Noxious, forcing them back a little bit. He's gonna be punching them down. But the turret, they're gonna relocate somewhere far behind. But they're leaving behind their support. The sound barrier is not gonna be enough to keep them alive. That's gonna be a very valuable bash and going down. Immortality. Field is going to do some work to keep them alive. So this is going to be able to make the use of it, though. Punches are going to come through 75%. It's contested. The Saints are fighting very hard for this one. They know that if they can turn it back, and they already do, so they can keep this hold going, then this game might be going their way. Looks to see that University of Texas Dallas, their numbers are dwindling, and so are their ultimates. The artillery is going to come out from phone, but it's going to get shut down by Tread. And with 85% by the time I say it, St. Clair College is looking to be stealing this one away. They have the Uber Eats speeding his way over to try to get the touch that they so desperately need. The Tracer as well, zipping, but with just one dash away from getting her feet on the point, St. Clair College are going to be able to hold it down and take the match against University of Texas Dallas. Very oh. well played. In fact, play of the game just goes, and goes to show how close this game was. Play of the game is going to go to the side of University of Texas Dallas. And this play was definitely momentum swinging. It was a huge point. And Emren, even he wasn't able to stop the side of Doi, but it was a very strong match. Now, very exciting glad that we were able to witness it is but it just me or both play of the games went to the baptiste i think it did i think all of them went to baptiste it support best gps <laughs> potentially <laughs> baptiste especially we've oh, yeah. seen what he's well, capable I mean, of in the hands of very capable he's players. so versatile right he has mm. good damage on his standard attacks Plus, his standard attacks also heal, I guess. It's an ultimate <laughs> way. attack, but it's a standard yeah. attack, right? I consider it an auto attack. Plus, the immortality field, plus the the, 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 the damage amp wall. Like, mm -hmm. he just does so much. It's like, I don't know. And I think that's, well, I don't even think. I know that's why you see um, Bastion paired with him yeah. so much. Because the ability to, even if your Bastion is getting mowed down, having an uh, immortality field to keep him alive long enough to kill whatever's about to kill him, at plus that damage amp on yeah, no, something it's... that's already so effective at just mowing things down. Mm -hmm. it, he, Bastion and Baptiste, there's a reason the, uh, their names are so similar, okay? They're yeah. meant to be together. But speaking sure. of meant to be together, League of Legends and you talking about it, two things that go hand in hand. <laughs> we saw the game ending up again. The Zin Zhao with 19 kills, one death, six assists. Tell me how that's, uh, how, how did that happen? Okay, you can so even here's the a, thing, a right? Zin Zhao... Lately, he has pretty good base damage, right? Mm -hmm. He plays around his early game pretty strongly. And once the Sin Zhao gets the ball rolling, mm -hmm. he gets he builds pretty tanky items. We saw it. the first item he built was a Titanic Hydra, right? That is... Uh, the item itself allows for an auto-attack reset, right? Right. Sin Zhao, yeah. when he charges in, right? He does his, like, whoop, whoop, right? And <laughs> then course. he goes in. And then he, has, he needs to do three auto-attacks to then airborne. Mm -hmm. Right, but the thing is, with the Titanic Hydra, you, get the reset, you have an auto attack faster. reset, so it's basically like two attacks, and then you get the airborne. Mm -hmm. And what happens is, because you can get an airborne that much faster, it's a lot easier to lock down your targets, right? And on top of that, the auto reset also gives you cooldown reduction, because his right. Qs give him cooldown for some reason. <laughs> Why it games? For some reason. Need I say more? Um, but yeah, because of that, you basically just end up having, oh yeah, I have a Titanic Hydra, so I'm tanky, because a lot of tanky stats from Titanic Hydra. Mm -hmm. And it also converts your bonus health into some damage. Plus, then he went Sundered Sky. Now, the item did get nerfed this patch uh, from going 6% missing health to 4% missing health. But it's still a critical strike guaranteed on the first hit, right? Which is 
still a good amount of damage. 150% damage is good damage. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, extra health, which means, again, more damage. And then you start seeing that snowball with the wit's end. Less CC that can get to him because of the tenacity, along with the Murtrez, I think Plus, that gets you up to like 40%. You have your team having such a good lane. We yep. saw those ganks coming out early. Bottom side for the Saints, they were facing so much pressure, very consistently. A lot of respect to them, though. Um, Arcaden, I think, still was able to outfarm the Ezreal for the most part. Oh, yeah, for the farm deck. So, very well played by the Saints. But with that League of Legends game under our belt, that first one is going to be locked away in the history books. The Saints are going to have the opportunity to learn from it. They now know Brooklyn College's play style, their strategy. Maybe they're going to be able to adapt to it and hopefully take this next game. But whether or not they do, we're going to have to wait and see as we get ready for their next game. But we're going to throw it to a quick break. And when we get back, we're going to have a nice draft for you to dissect and analyze. Ooh, so I love dissecting. We'll see you guys very soon. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We have the draft for game two against the St. Clair Saints Academy League of Legends team versus Brooklyn Colleges. And again, it's the first time seeing Brooklyn College here today, but what they've shown us so far is they have the potential to be very deadly and very proficient, so much so that the first band that the Saints made... Gabe, if you want to take that. The <laughs> yeah. the, they saw the threat that the Sinzel was... And they banned it out. Going for a Graves band again. They're banning the jungle. They know the jungle is a strong point at the uh, right here. And then followed up by the Fiora because the Fiora is annoying. I would know. I play her. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, on the side of Brooklyn uh, University here, the Kane band, the Echo band, and the Hui band. The Hui band is interesting. 
Um, I haven't seen many of those, so maybe something that they're cooking. I don't mm. know. Um, here, first pick Rakan, which is interesting, but there is no Zaya ban, so probably a second pick Zaya would be the choice here. Uh, but we do see the Ezreal Karma come out. That's a very pokey bot lane, so you got to watch out what you pick because you need something that'll be able to either match the poke or farm on the tower really, really well. Here, not actually <laughs> Not even try to contest. Just give nope. up and farm under tower. I, I like that. <laughs> the severe a perfect pick for that. So opting for the Vi. The Vi makes sense in the jungle. Honestly, Vi mm -hmm. just... I mean, she's a pretty standard lock down the ADC kind of pick, uh, but she has a lot of CC. That's something that we saw that St. Clair was missing in their comp last time, mm -hmm. and they have that CC now. They have the Rock on Airborne. They have the Vi, who has, what, like two Airbornes, I think, which is really good. Um, the lockdown, be, being able to just pick out somebody yeah. who's a problem and just start beating the crap out of them. Um, they wish they had that last game, so they're going to make sure that they have it this game. Yep, 100%. And then, ooh, Brooklyn opting for the Lissandra for that extra lockdown here. So we're already seeing some pretty good champions picked on both sides. The Aatrox ban going to come out on the side of Brooklyn. Definitely a champion that you need to watch out for. Omnivamp being so prevalent in this current season with Sundered Sky and all of these other... Uh, items that just make you heal infinitely. The Nocturne ban coming out on the side of St. Clair College. Really, really good ban here. Just making sure that you can't have those rushdown assassins slash bruisers. I don't know. Nocturne usually itemizes more towards a bruiser build nowadays uh, with Experimental Hexplate that pairs up so well with his ultimate. Swain getting another ban here on the side of Brooklyn. Swain being a champion that's just so annoying to go up against because when he's in his ult, he will not die. Whether that's a Swain top, a Swain support, it doesn't matter. With Malignants, with Leandries, they don't die. Valuable. And then, of course, the J4 ban here just because J4 is annoying. I, I need I say more. Cataclysm is a very strong spell. Well, yeah, that too, but properly. mainly because he's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like going up against J4. Uh, Poppy. Actually, never mind. I hate Poppy more. Uh, <laughs> I love Poppy, okay? Take She's it. annoying. I'm trying to smite the dragon, and she just sends me back to my phone. Exactly. Like, Yo, I'm trying to do something That's here. That's your fault for getting hit by it. Just literally just don't get hit. Use your flash. That, you have it for a reason, though. But it's on cooldown. Well, that's your problem because you got hit by it last time. But they're going to cement themselves with a poppy pick. I think they're just trying to establish the fact that they want Twisted to be able fate. to play aggressively. And again, the way that they're able to get those lockdown pickoffs. Mm. I'm assuming this poppy is either going to be top or jungle. Maybe even bottom. I'm not Honestly, sure. it's a flex right now. Yeah. Definitely a flex. Uh, but the Twisted Fate, a very early game champion here. Maybe we're looking for something that's really snowball-y. Uh, letting that severe... Oh, no. Actually, we're looking here for a little bit more of a funnel comp around that severe. The rock on being able to give those shields th that engage. Vi being able to peel. Joseph Fade being able to peel. We're looking a lot more like a funnel comp here. The mo Wait, Mordekaiser? Are we going to Brazil, boys? We are going to Brazil! Hell yeah. That's a peel comp. Yeah, okay. This is a peel comp full funnel around Severe. Mordekaiser can send anybody who gets onto uh, Severe straight to Brazil. Severe doesn't need to worry about them. And then again, Twisted Fate with the gold card. Vi with two stuns and then the airborne out of the rock on lots of cc led the severe dps and you are sitting pretty but that will be a problem because the Jax is definitely good at staying on those adcs yeah. and getting them out he might be a bruiser but he definitely plays like an assassin when <laughs> i mean to be fair adcs see any champion as an assassin because they don't have a health bar so it, it literally like three hits is all it takes to kill them so yeah the Jax is definitely going to be a threat but Against the Mortar Kaiser, Jax is, um, it's not an ideal lane, right? Because Mortar Kaiser is very immobile, right? Mm -hmm. He has, what, movement speed on his passive, and that's about it. He needs to get the passive off, but Jax here probably going to opt for, uh, what usually is a Grasp of the Undying build, right? So, those, um, usually the combo goes, get your Grasp up, right, by auto and minions, um, get your ultimate stacks up, because... Why not get extra attack speed, right? And then uh, on the third auto attack of his ultimate, right, deals extra damage. Mm -hmm. Plus his W deals extra damage on hit. <laughs> plus Grasp of the Undying deals extra damage on hit. Percent base too. So yeah, that third auto attack on Jax hurts a lot. And even in the early game with just Grasp and W, you chunk them out for a solid 10% of their health. And in the early game at level, you know, two, three, that's a lot of health. So you got to watch out. 
But another thing that I want to point out is the amount of CC that we're seeing on the side of Brooklyn here. Uh, the Karma with the Lockdown with the Tether, right? Mm -hmm. You have the Lissandra with... Lissandra, CC, Lissandra, they go hand in hand. <laughs> there is no Lissandra without CC, and there's no CC Poppy without Lissandra. Gets and that then, pick yeah. off onto the wall, stun up, airborne, stun anybody who's trying to interfere, away. The barrier, make sure you can't dash out or yep. do anything cheeky. It's going to be very difficult for the Saints to... I feel like this is the way I'm seeing it, and before we send it to a break, I want to ask your opinion on this, but... Again, the, what I'm seeing on the side of Brooklyn College is mm -hmm. they just have an overwhelming, aggressive stance here. They have a very pokey bottom lane. They have a very strong, versatile mid laner. Poppy and Jax, I believe either of these could be the top laner or jungler, if I'm not mistaken. If my meta sense is correct from back in the yeah. day. All right. I still got it. I still got it. Um, <laughs> so these are very aggressive brawly, skirmishy characters on both on that side of Brooklyn College, but S the St. Clair College side, they have the Sivir, and like you mentioned, they kind of want to put all the faith into their performance. I feel like that might not be a bad choice because of that last game. Like I said, faced a lot of pressure, a lot of uh, problems, but they were still able to overfarm and still be a problem, but with both of these lineups being laid out, and again, before you send it to a quick break, tell me, based on these drafts, who do you think is going to take it now that we actually have some data on play styles from both of these teams? Honestly, I would say Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Purely due to the fact of how sophisticated funnel comps are. Mm -hmm. Because funnel compositions require like split-second decision-making. And you need very, very good synergy. Because what happens is, if you see somebody dashing for your ADC, and everybody unloads every little bit of CC they have on that one person, you have four other people that need to be taken care of, and you have no more CC left that's to take the, care of them. You don't really have a choice. You kind of have to do that. You well, know, you but that's it, the it, idea of Brazil. Exactly. Right. So you want to like spread out your CC, but you need to make those decisions within like microseconds. Mm -hmm. So it's a really hard comp to pull off. But if Sinclair can pull off the composition, oh yeah, they win. No problem, no question asked. Just because of the fact that they don't really have like the Poppy would mm -hmm. have been a counter pick if Sinclair had dashes. Exactly. They don't really have much except they have the rock on which has a lot, and Vi has an unstoppable on her ultimate. Oh, well. So it's just the dash of the punch, mm -hmm. right? So as long as she isn't engaging with the punch, and she's just using kind of a punch to get close, then click on the ADC to alter, mm -hmm. and then makes a big, really big path, which lets Severe make a really bigger path of, well, death, mm. it works really, really well. But again, it's a question of being able to pull off that team composition. And so... I have faith in the Saints, yeah. but again, Brooklyn College showed us that they are a force to be reckoned with. But whether or not the Saints will be able to overcome that force will have to be seen as we head into this game too. We'll throw it to a quick break while the lobby is going to get settled up, and we'll be back very soon.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to League of Legends, or soon to be League of Legends, we're at the desk right now. Um, but we're going to be hopping back into the League of Legends game that's going to be showing up soon. Uh, we're seeing the final comp of League of Legends uh, on the side the of the... It. Yeah, complete on the Sivir side for uh, Sinclair College, going up against the more dynamic something e comp of Brooklyn College. I'm. It's hard to see the synergies, but you do see how they kind of function, right? Like, there's not, like, a big wombo combo that you can see, other than, you know, like, Jack's five-man stun or something. But you definitely see that they have a lot of focus in their team composition, and that that's one of their focuses. Uh, but we're going to be seeing how that works, right? Here, Severe getting really early pokes down. Rockon opting to actually engage onto the Karma here, taking a lot of damage. PTA does end up getting blocked on him. He's got to watch out those Qs from Karma, chunking down the Severe. She's got to watch out. This bot lane is, yeah, they're already backing off a little bit. They already know. They don't have priority in this lane. They need to just sit back and farm. Try and get that CS, try and get the Severe online. It's going to take time. Severe has those cookies for that reason. Here on the matchup in the top lane, Ooh. as Bordekaiser hits level 2, it is a poppy top. Uh, so definitely interesting here. The extra movement speed from the passive going to chunk down the poppy quite a lot. So we have to watch out for that poppy. Really, really dangerous in the early game because she has mana problems, right? So she needs to watch out. It's really dangerous to play that lane. But it is playable. The thing is... Um, Jax in the jungle, it's all right, but it's not ideal. Really? Yes, because he only has one AoE spell. He His AoE clear is not ideal. Uh, so he spends a lot of time on wraps, on Krugs, on those, uh, even on wolves. He does have a good single target, so he might opt. Um, sometimes you opt for like a 3 can clear and then go for a gank, right? Right. Uh, just so that you can kind of ignore those AoE. Uh, I know all about those jungle routes. Camps. Yeah. Noxious and belligerent jungle routes that just make everybody in the game angry, especially the enemy jungler. But speaking of anger, we have our Mordekaiser on Sinclair's side, just wreaking havoc in the top side, making this Poppy's life very agonizing, or at least as much as possible. In the mid lane, we have Kogito. She deserves versus, it. Yeah. <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> uh, we love Poppy here. We love Poppy. Bottom side, we have Creator Soa, Gregorio versus Princeton, and Ming QAQ facing off here. And you were just talking about more or less, or maybe you weren't talking about, right? One oh, okay. rather, actually, we got the Airborne already coming up from the Rakan here. And Ezreal's gonna be forced to teleport out. Action is gonna slip aside just a little bit there, but I want you to tell me about the jungler's uh, agency in this game. You know, where are they most likely to target first and why? And, you know, what, what's the significance of their first early actions in this game? I feel like the momentum is going to roll a lot off the backs, especially with the jacks in the jungle, especially with the Vi. Vi is not a passive laid back jungle. No, just wants, definitely you know, not, which is action. actually why I'm kind of surprised here. Vi doesn't even go for the... Um, the scuttle. She already knows probably that Jax is on that bot lane scuttle. So she loses both scuttle crabs. She just full cleared and then went for the back here. As we can see, oh, hold on here. The bot lane, we've got a lot of action going on. PTA ends up getting procked onto the rock on lots of burst going on him. He's got to watch out in the future for those little trades. His shield isn't that big. Um, and yeah, here Vi playing really, really passively, which is quite surprising here. Just faking an opt for the red card just to get some damage onto the Lissandra in the mid lane. But yeah, this pathing in the jungle is really interesting. We've got the Jax pathing top to bot, Vi pathing top to bot, and we're seeing Jax with both the scuttles. That means he's got more gold. Here, doesn't even opt for the back, goes back, gets his Krogs, and here he might be looking to get the Void Grubs. Um, locking down those Void Grubs, really important. We've been seeing it a lot in pro play recently, but the Void Grubs are the prime priority. Getting some attention onto the top lane, uh, which we absolutely love. Um, <laughs> it's an island though, isn't it? You're not supposed to go there. No, you're not supposed to go there, but you know, as I said, it, it's nice interacting with somebody here and there, other than, you know, your mortal enemy for the entire game. Now, the, the Void Grubs are a new mechanic. Uh, I'm seeing the game. Did you break it down, what they do, what their function is, and how important they are for everybody? Yeah, so the Void Grubs, at the start, 
So they don't really seem like the, they're that important. What mm. they do is, for each Void Grub you have, you deal bonus oh. true damage. Hold on, there's an engage in the ball lane. Coming out, the Vi dedicating her flash to get the knockup, giving the kill in first blood off to Severe. This is a really good start for St. Clair. Very strong gank coming out and more or less answering the question I asked you earlier on, you know, where is this aggression going to be laid out and why is it going to be so important? The Vi answering both of those questions very simply with their actions and I think the answer is pretty clear, you know, with the Saints draft at the very least, very Sivir centric, right? They want Sivir to have the best game possible, so it's only natural to jump the gank and give Sivir the best game possible. Getting that first blood, huge gold spike and momentum, forcing back the enemy ADC. It's all just working out very well for the Saints so far, and I can't imagine we're going to see Vi stop doing things like that around this yeah, game. Yeah, it's definitely going to be focused around the severe, and thanks to that, that's why Vi was pathing bot side. She pathed bot side because she wants to help her ADC. She's not going to prioritize objectives here. But as I was talking about objectives, the Void Grubs. Right. The Void Grubs, for each Void Grub you have, you deal a small damage over time of true damage to all towers that you hit. So really, really important objective oh, as big. actually the Chemtech Drake here goes towards Brooklyn College practically uncontested. So yeah, the extra true damage, two towers, is very, very dangerous, mainly mm -hmm. on those ADCs, because it's on every auto attack, right? right? So that true damage scales up a lot, and if you get five or six of them, mm -hmm. you end up getting like m little minion spawns, basically. Uh, think like Belveth Ultimate Passive. You know when she brings the boys? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but kind of like that, but not as many of the boys. Um, and when that happens, basically, you have to watch out because you can be like, oh, okay, cool, there's one minion left, I can just walk back up to my tower. As it turns out, you cannot because they just spawned three little minions. And oh, you so can the minions now, spawn right. more. Yeah, gotcha. but the trick is, the minions are really unpredictable. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to tell when they're going to spawn. Um, as we can see here, I think, yeah, Severe and Rockon holding a freeze. Really, really good wave control here. Um, that freeze kind of stopping uh, Ezreal and Karma from poking too much. But as we can see here, Twisted Fate Jack trying to get in. to his lane. The ultimate on the Lissandra going to connect. Flash dedicated by Jax, but not going to connect on his E. So that means that Twisted Fate gets away with half his health bar. Really, really good plays. Uh, just the stun, well connected. Twisted Fate playing it very well. Uh, but here, of course, let's look at the CS. CS, Mordecai is just behind. Vi is behind. Twisted Fate is behind. Rakan's ahead. Rakan, Woo! wait. <laughs> Rakan's ahead. All right, you know what? The the support is ahead on CS. I mean, the game's already won. Oh, As the quickness gets popped that by the Rakan, and the Karma gets sent airborne. The stun almost going to connect onto the Rakan. Oh, so here. Flash this flash! Flash is... Oh, oh, doesn't get the kill onto the Karma. Doesn't end up giving the kill away to Ezreal. That is not ideal. I, I, I even had like a joke loaded in my brain like, oh man, that CS really paid off, but the flash ruined it. He, he If you didn't notice, he, he basically flashed into himself because the way flash works, if it still works the same way when I was actually playing the game, like if you can't flash where you're going, it kind of just finds the next best route. And I guess you try to flash past the tower, but maybe he wasn't just ahead of it so the flash thought he wanted to flash right up to the tower instead of past it so he yeah. basically just flashed one step ahead of himself instead of past that tower and speaking of past that tower we got wild here being a tower of its own dealing tower like damage to gojo as he made the wrong step in the wrong neighborhood and he's gonna pay with it for his life lissandra so low but acting as a bastion of hope for brooklyn college as they're able to escape out of that seemingly near-death situation, but going down on those void grubs, if now, if you were going to have any time to finish up explaining what they do, now would be the best chance, because they're going to be gone from this game at the yeah. point. Yeah, well, I've mostly covered them, okay. but as you can see, when you take them, void grubs are kind of a threat, mainly in those early on levels, because they deal a lot of damage, mm -hmm. and every time you kill one, Another one, the other two gain shields. That's why Rao is actually really strong in the jungle right now because she can clear them so fast because her Q breaks shields. It's kind of like a Renekton W, how it breaks shields, all that kind of stuff, right? So hold on here, the quickness getting popped by the rock on onto the Ezreal. Ezreal dedicating the flash to try and get out of there, but nothing going to come out of that engagement as the Vi here decides, you know what, boys, we're diving this guy, but the 
TP getting popped oh by the Lissandra, going to make, force them to get away here. Rakan does end up getting oh. ignited. The root by the Lissandra gets the kill onto the Rakan. Double kill from the Lissandra as she locks down the Severe, and that is a triple kill on the Lissandra with the Vi. Now hear Ooh. me out. Hear me out, okay? That looked like a, a foolish mistake, but I empathize with the same here. Right? The, the Vi was able to get some success bottom. They had a couple skirmishes that went their way, and you don't want to let the game slip out just out of complacency, right? Yeah. This stuff is all about timing, all about opportunity. So they saw an opportunity, and they went for it. They just weren't exactly where they needed to be for it, though. You can't sit on your hands and wait for things to happen. You have to make them happen. That's what they were going for there. It didn't go their way, and in fact, uh, I don't want to be pessimistic, but I feel like it's going to be very hard to recover from as a Kodito now facing the brunt of offense. Oh, Princeton no, this with the lane coming everywhere. off, the Grey Gorilla is here, dashing forward, goes for the airborne, but it's going to miss. Flash forward, Princeton is going to be behind the tower now. Sam just throwing out those magic spikes, but Gojo now on the buy, finding the Jack Swap is in trouble. Airborne going to be coming up from the Recon soon, hopefully, but Vi charging through with the RKO, takes him down. Kodito going to get the pick off there. Can't be too upset about that, but now Creator Soa looking for the pick off, but it's not going to go his way. Those discs aren't going to be finding the target here. Oh, a lot of CS. Love to see that. At least, so. but you were saying, I think you were saying something. You got kind of lost in the, the chaos. Honestly, here. I lost what I was saying. <laughs> but then again, I have a really short memory. If I didn't eat the same thing every morning, I wouldn't know what I was. It was same. <laughs> okay, perfect. I'm, good that we know each other. Um, but yeah, here, the Severe isn't looking really good. But she didn't choose to push that kill on the, or potential kill on the Lissandra, which is important. She's playing really safe because she knows she's kind of the win condition here. Um, the Kraken Slayer coming out, which is nice. Uh, but, oh, hold on here. Mordekaiser bringing Poppy to Brazil. His passive starts to chunk her down. She is stuck between a rock and a hard place, or the rock that is Mordekaiser here. Jax, once the Brazil ends, Going to end up helping the Poppy. No kill comes from that, but that Poppy took a lot of damage. So yeah, as we can see here, uh, oh, the Quick is getting popped by the Rakan as he finds the Karma, isolates her, and the kill going to Severe. Very good 1v3 there. Ezreal trying to get some poke damage, but he's got to watch out. There are three people there. Uh, the Sweeper here getting rid of the Vision in the bot side, uh, as I believe the Dragon is going to come up very soon, if it's not already. Um, a recall from Mordekaiser here, getting himself the Rylas. Um, yeah, the Rylas kind of mandatory on Mordekaiser, right? Once you have the Rylas, they, they can't really do much. What's it do? Uh, Rylas. So it's a 20, 20, 25, maybe 30% percent slow. Uh, hopefully Rylas uh, here is going to yeah. be doing well, some Well, as you magic. can see, the Poppy's so slow when she's in yeah. his uh, kind of passive, right? And that's from the Rylas. That's the whole goal. Because oh, Rylas everybody Crystal Scepter. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're saying you're saying it funny. <laughs> yes, the, I was saying it funny, or maybe you were. I'm not sure. No, nah, that's Rylai. Trust me, I know. Ryla. Okay. <laughs> and uh, Codito is named after one of my favorite Dota heroes. That's right. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> Uh, in the middle lane here, Kodito is facing off the offense of Brooklyn College like a Bandito. And Mordekaiser and his Poppy, again. familiar faces, but what I'm a little bit more wary of here is we see a lot of champions in the top side here. They might be confronting each other, looking for... They want to get a car. Car? Oh yeah, you didn't know? No. Nope. Harold now is uh, pilotable. So, huh. yeah, and it deals more damage if you do drive it. The problem is, <laughs> um, it's slightly buggy. So, if you do it wrong, you end up going the other way. Interesting. Oh, hold on here. By going to get locked down by the Lissandra ultimate, the kill what? going off to the Poppy. And there's a fight in the bot lane here. Getting, Severe getting the kill onto the Ezreal. Very, very good trade here. Honestly, losing a Vi for a kill on the uh, Severe, definitely worth it here. Three and two Severe. She's got her Kraken Slayer. She's starting to get her second item up. Really, really good progress here. Um, her CS, of course, Severe being the queen of wave clear, is starting to stack up really quickly now. Um, we're seeing... Ezreal didn't get as much punishment as mm -hmm. he usually does in a lane like this. And that was probably due... Oh, hold on here. Mordekaiser popping Brazil, going to bring the Poppy with him. Passive going to slow down her Poppy a lot, but not quite going to be able to get that damage down. Poppy being kind of a tenacious champion to go up against. 
and hard to fight. The ultimate going to get popped by the Twisted Fate, trying to land a gold card onto Lissandra, but not going to find anything there. The Canic Boom actually being the first item on the Poppy, very useful against those AP champions. And here, Mordekaiser has got to watch out, pops his shield, but going to get stunned onto the wall, and part two of Q's po uh, Poppy's Q is going to connect and get the kill on him. As we can see here, the car. Jax, <laughs> yep, there you go, he's And driving. the Void Grubs too. Yep, those are Void Grubs. The whole gang's here, and that tower is looking to be under a lot of pressure. Can't exactly see what HP has right now, but it wasn't pretty last time we were able to see that bar. In fact, most of that bar is now black and blue, just like a bruise, actually, uh, which is going to be very fitting considering the amount of beating it's taking right now. Bottom side, Queerso and Sam going to be facing off a little bit completely unbeknownst to him. The offense that's coming out from Brooklyn College going to be slowing out, trying to get the sun, but Queerso is so heavily fed, it's going to be because that pick off. Breaker is going to be chasing them down, finds Jack Fisher in the back, but Gojo chasing down Ming Q, A Q, Gojo so close, going to get the kill. Princeton now trying to just lay out the peel. Codito's holding a gold card and it's got the Jax's name on it. Double kill is going to lead to for Gojo. Our Vi, Great Gorilla, going for another airborne, just slowing him up enough to enable the kill for St. Clair College. And they're still showing signs of life in this game. Before uh, this kind of of phases out here. I did want to point out just a little bit before, while the kills were, the kills, Saints didn't get all those kills before, three of our kills were on Sivir out of our four total, and that one kill, Sivir was also present for. So they're doing a very good job of getting this Sivir uh, in nice fall and fed, and, yeah. fed, uh, and they're not going to be letting up just yet, as they're, they're still, still fighting out. Poppy, chasing them down, forcing them back to the turret. The wall is up. Codito holding the gold card, forced to commit it, and just they recognize that they're ahead. They don't want to push too much. They're just going to retreat and go back home. Yeah, well during those fights, honestly, very, very good placement. You had the Vi in the front line, uh, just completely making a lot of space for that Severe to just DPS, get the damage down, let the kind of the fight flow with so the Severe um, discs just ricocheting off of everyone, and you could see it. Uh, the kills right now with Severe with a shutdown, actually. Oh, hold on here, this is a fight. Mordekaiser are pulling out the Brazil, going to try and get his passive proc'd, but not going to find it. And yeah, oh, Ooh. hold on here. The Quinn is getting popped by the Rakan. Ignite going onto the Lissandra. Lissandra forced to dedicate her ultimate here to try and buy some there. more time. Going to try the flash coming out from Mordekai. The flash Q, very, very clean there. Risky, wow. but it paid off. And now, let's just, my favorite part about these games, you know, MOBAs, look at the numbers sometimes. Let's take a look at the numbers here. CS, gold, participation, items. Yeah. What are you seeing? What's, what's the tale down there telling us? All right, well, top lane, Poppy wins. <laughs> she won. GG. Poppy wins! How dare you. Um, <laughs> in the jungle, the kind of what I expected, the Jax, of course, not being ideal champion, Definitely a little bit behind, but ahead on CS, which is important, right? He has been power farming uh, pretty much the whole game. And then the Lissandra here, kind of being behind, I'll say, uh, considering the Twisted Fate and getting those roams in at the right time. Going for a little bit more of a tanky build, right, with that Rod of Ages and the Lich Bane. Going to go for the Rapid Fire Cannon next, Twisted Fate kind of being one of those champions that has a weird build going in 80. Right. Item. Just, you know, why not? Um, the, ooh, second item onto the Severe does come out. Those, um, uh, the Navari Quick Blade here being very important. The extra damage that it gives uh, on crit, but most importantly, uh, what is like the biggest buff that Navri gives is that cooldown reduction, right? right. On those standard abilities. Uh, Sivir, of course, gains movement speed with her passive every time she hits an ability. So she just gains a lot of movement speed. She's able to kite very, very easily. Speed demon. But yeah, that's the plan. I mean, uh, standard ADCs, I will say, usually rely on either speed or crowd control to stay alive, right? That's how they kite. That's how Jin stays alive. Jin, every time he crits, he gets movement speed. Sivir, every time she lands an ability, oh, she gets movement something speed. bad here, coming. Yeah, we're seeing the Jax engaging on the Rock Hunt. Rock Hunt going to dedicate his dash uh, to try and get away from there, right into that blue buff alcove. Here, are they trying to force maybe like a Baron or something? I think that might be it, you know, 
I, I see when you see a lot of champions around an objective like that, and the game's in a state where everybody's volatile, everybody has their power spikes. It's like it's like seeing a red barrel in a video game, and nobody can resist <laughs> on it to shoot it, right? <laughs> they just want to shoot it. So they're doing anything they can, even if it's not smart. It's hard to fight the Earth to shoot the red barrel. And I think that's exactly what the Saints are trying to do. They're trying to agitate. They're trying to cause something to happen here. And even if it might not be the right play, they're going to just have to play around whatever mess they get themselves in. Yep, and here, as we can see, the Israel is pretty far behind. I mean, in CS and in items. Let's go. Just, yeah, yes, I am very happy. I am not a big fan of Ezreal, personally. Um, but he just, I, don't know, I hate getting poked. It's like playing against a Jace, but more tailored to the early game. He just slaps you with Qs, and it's like, okay, could you, could you cut it out, please? <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying to, to farm here. here. Um, but yeah, Ezreal finishes the ER. Finishes the Monomune, but doesn't end up... Oh, okay, yeah, th now it's done. As I'm saying it, it was... He just finishes the stacking. Uh, the Malignant's coming out of the Karma. Malignant's first, not Imperial Mandate, which mm. is what um, St. Clair College opted for last time. So we're kind of seeing something a little bit different here, opting for the more AP-centered and Pope-centered build instead of that more support-centric thing uh, that we saw last game on the side of St. Clair College. So this is kind of what I was more expecting when I saw the Karma, um, because Malignant's is combo so well with karma um the, the extra it's it slows or well sorry the karma q slows which means that you're in a magic resist uh, i guess it does deal a little bit of damage over time i believe um zone for longer plus you can lock you down easier it's just generally speaking malignant's combos so well with karma and her ability to have her own um, but yeah, as we can see, those Mantra Qs coming out, trying to get some poke down on the side of oh. St. Clair College. But, ooh, hold on here, we might have a fight here. Big fight over Vision, um, but not a lot of abilities being used to fight that Vision. Just sweepers for the most part. Um, as here, we can see St. Clair College opting to go over to that Dragon. The Ezreal Ultimate coming out, not going to find anyone. Cassandra here on the flank right behind St. Clair College, as Jax is going to engage, but not going to find anyone onto the stun. Stun locks down the Vi. Lissandra here onto the back line, oh, just going to pop out her stasis. A problem. Big burst of damage onto Lissandra. Shut down Poppy onto Vi. Poppy with a double kill onto the Rakan. Mordekaiser are going to find the kill onto the Lissandra, but he's getting burst down Go with a lot Dino. of damage. Heals a little bit, but we're gonna see the Jax get the kill onto that one. And Poppy takes a tower in the meantime, you know, just kind of as a side quest, I guess. And then, ooh, hold on here. Poppy gets the shutdown onto the Severe. That is a big problem. You do not want your Severe dying, and nice. you don't want that shutdown gold going to the tank. There's so many close calls in that fight, I feel. Uh, it's, it's hard to even nail down. One thing that, I, that stood out to me was seeing how, uh, how Gojo, our Vi, kind of just got in the middle of that whole fight and just wreaked havoc. Went down first, but looking at the effects that that initiation had, you can't underestimate it. It, it made so many things possible there, and so many of those kills that the Saints almost got wouldn't have been almost possible if it wasn't yeah, for that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Gojo basically said, all right, you know what? Screw it. We're going in. Just Leroy, Domain Expansion, whatever you want to call it, and then... Yeah, I mean, yeah, he died. Don't get me wrong, he died. But he did create a lot of space for his team to enable he, them to either retreat or to engage. Unfortunately, it resulted in a retreat and a very costly one at that. But it did open up a lot of space in that team fight. Uh, so I guess just unlucky. That, that, that's what happens, unlucky. Um, the states got yeah. split up a little bit there, so they weren't able to have the Sivir in that spot. That would like if Sivir was in the position to even get like one or two right clicks off or abilities thrown out in the midst of all that chaos. I feel like the same would have wiped, but Sivir was kind of cut off from the rest of the team and forced back, um, and it was such an effective move by Brooklyn College. But again, both teams are still very much in this game, and a lot can go down. But it's gonna have to come down to being able to capitalize off of these things. Yeah, for sure here. Mordekaiser popping the ultimate, going to bring, I believe, Karma into Brazil with him. 
but uh, he does not want to see what's on the outside here as he gets bursted down by four members of Brooklyn College here that will result in a bear. But one thing I want to bring attention to here is uh, how the Lissandra plays on the flanks so well. She's able to get so many of those cheeky little angles that make the fight just absolute hell because if Lissandra is in your back line, your Sivir can't do what she needs to do. So Mordecai's are here, needs to lock down the Sivir so that she can then uh, just, or Mordecai's are lock, no, lock down the Lissandra so that she doesn't stun lock the Sivir, right? Because that's your priority here. Uh, as we see, St. Clair College opting to just take out the tower, push up those waves so that they can mitigate the amount of damage that Baron is going to do. The quickness getting popped oh by the Rakan here. The stun not quite connecting onto him. Lots of damage, but no one is dying. They are tanky. The first death going onto the Ezreal by the Vi. Then, oh, Twisted Fate going to find the kill onto the Alessandra uh, here. Lots of damage, a uh, 4v1 onto the Poppy. Mordekaiser finding that kill. Here's what's so difficult about this lineup that the Saints have. The, the Sivir's so deadly, but I, I saw it there. I saw half of Brooklyn College at like three HP, yeah. but Sivir has one guy on him, and the rest of the team has to turn around and get this guy off of the Sivir, because otherwise Sivir's either probably going to die, or it's, either way, Sivir's not going to be able to chase down nope. those guys. And it's just such a hard thing to balance. Of course, Saints did come out in favor of that fight, but they could have gotten so much more, but Poppy was just on top of the Sivir for a good 15 seconds, which made any cleanup impossible. Yep. And, I mean, to be fair, that's kind of the problem with funnel comps, right? Exactly. Once, yeah. yeah, once your funneled champion is locked down, you need to deal with whatever's locking you down. And it's why um, sometimes you're going to see, like, a funnel comp around, like, a Master E. Because Master E has self heal, he just presses Q, mm -hmm. right? But again, those aren't as effective because then you have two DPSs. Because you need an ADC, right? You need a ranged damage and... That's why you usually funnel comps around the bot lane, but then there comes the problem of peel here. As they set up, uh, yeah, both teams here setting up for the next dragon. This is soul point for the side of Brooklyn College. They already have a Chemtech and both Infernal Drags uh, with against St. Clair's only uh, Mountain Drake. So just a bit of resistances on the side of St. Clair College, which is a lot of potential damage, um, but for sure. It, the fights are going to be close here. Every fight they take on both sides, the gold is still relatively equal. They're within like two, yeah, within 2,000 golds uh, of each other, and the golds are in the right spots, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Severe already at her 60% crit mark, that big power spike. Actually, over 60 now, she is at 75% crit. Um, plus. 75% critical uh, hit. Crit chance. That's it. Yeah. That is really high here, as the Sivir does end up getting locked down a little bit, but not too much. She does end up getting killed by the Karma. Probably going to find the kill onto the Rock on the Jax. Kills the Twisted Fate, and the Lasandra picks off the Vi. Holy smokes, everybody just found their mark. Hold on here. As real, uh, or Lasandra, watch out. That cannon can kill you. Um, <laughs> you do not want to know how many times I have died to minions after a team I think fight. I do. No, you don't. <laughs> You don't. Trust me, you don't. Um, ooh, good ward hop here by the Jax. Mordekaiser are deciding to dedicate the he flash wants it. to it. He wants that Jax, and he's going to get him. Big shutdown here going towards the Mordekaiser here. Uh, Mordekaiser looking pretty strong here. He already has three items, opting for the magic penetration boots. So this is more of a damage-centric uh, Mordekaiser. Which makes sense to me. Yeah, it does. Um, I mean, he could have gone for the Moonstone Mordekaiser, if you're aware of that one. Not. It's a um, mathematically correct Mordekaiser. <laughs> oh, yeah. That sounds scary. Yeah, until you realize that he's building support items 80% of the time. Gotcha. But one thing that really stuck out to me in that last exchange there was, again, the way Brooklyn College takes its initiations, it's always, they, they always have some kind of back out there. Yes. I feel like they always have an escape route that the Saints just don't have the same tools. The Saints, as soon as an initiation starts, as soon as a fight starts, they have to commit. But they have an Ezreal inside of Brooklyn College. They have a Lissandra. They have a Jax, as we already saw, ward hopping away. Poppy can send people away. Karma, well, 
karma. But every single one th that matters on the side of Broken College has some way of disengaging or forcing you to disengage, whereas I can't say the same thing the same. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking at the states, we're kind of looking at a release state diff, I guess. Um, Sivir, definitely, like, her kit is just not centered or tailored around having that versatility. Uh, here, hold on here. Everybody wants to lock down the Karma. The ultimate getting dedicated by Twisted Fate. Everything, the, even the quickness gets sent out by the Rockon here. They're gonna go and try and greet for more. The ultimate going to lock down the Lissandra. Lissandra popping her stasis, popping her ultimate, which is another stasis, and then flashing away using the claw and does get away. Wow, yeah. That's the Lissandra moment. And that whole time, hey, look at the middle lane. Uh, Broken Cause, they're trying to do some oh, yeah. damage and force the Saints back, which they're successful in. They find Mordekaiser at the bottom turret, but pulling it back Ooh, good in. Little insect. This could go really bad for either team here. Just depends on the outcome of this duel. But Ooh. it goes the side of the Saints here, but Mordekaiser's back to reality. Poppy is there to greet him at the gates of Brazil. Takes him down, pushes to the wall. They find Godito, and they find him at the perfect time to take him out. Lissandra has come back. The claw goes out, and a triple kill now for the Poppy, who is absolutely wreaking mayhem. He's not even taking damage for the turret. College. It's creator Soa and Gojo are the only ones left, and this turret is a nice delicious snack for Brooklyn College. They don't want to give the Penta, not yet at the very least, St. Clair College force on the back, hook, back foot for now. Yeah, not a very easy game here for St. Clair College. They need to get that momentum back and up. And again, same thing as last game, that bot tower going down with the inhibitor. And from this standpoint, it's really hard to come back. The inhibitors creating so much momentum for the enemy team, uh, just locking them into their base. But that does mean that the Sivir gets to free farm. Sivir here uh, does have her Phantom Dancer, which is actually a really good combo on Sivir. I'm surprised it didn't come out item? earlier. What? That, that feathery item? Does it looks like a feather. The Phantom Dancer? Is that those two daggers? Uh, yeah, they're they're two sickles. They're ah. the well, sickle-ish. I, I don't know. They're kind of weird. Basically, it gives uh, a lot of movement speed. 10% yeah, movement speed. I remember that much. And attack speed, uh, which is really useful. But yeah, on Sivir, really strong uh, item. And it combos really well with her kiting and her passive. Mm -hmm. But the only problem is, again, but you can kite as much as you want. Lockdown is lockdown. CC, CC. You can't kite CC at the end of the day, right? Um, I mean, man, kind I of wish tenacity. I could. A little bit. Yeah, that's when you get a cleanse. But we don't have a cleanse here. We don't even have a QSS, um, which, I mean, to be fair, makes sense. Not even a QSS. Oh, yeah, there is one QSS. One QSS on the side of Ezreal. Israel is a QSS for Brazil. Oh, which makes sense. But speaking of Brazil, looks like Brooklyn College is going to try to take the Saints down there. They're just putting an overwhelming force on that bottom side. The Poppy also is going to knock down two. But the battle's not over yet. Maybe it might be for Great Gorilla on the left side going down the Rakan. They're left without the knock up. But now we have Gojo going into the ultimate. Oh Committed. Mordecai is there, is taking a lot of heat now. But oh. Creator Soa uh, taking a huge blast. Thanks to Poppy and the Ezreal. They're going to take them down. Mordecai is the only one left. And he's not going to be long for this. World. He's gonna go down inevitably. Twisted Fate, I believe, also this game out of that fight, but he's not in much of a better situation. The shield oh, wait, maybe. Actually, he's not dead yet. Now he is, though. Smoke a little too fast. And in fact, Ezreal actually was able to find Twisted Fate. And maybe I'm speaking too soon, Gabriel, but this seems like it might be it. It does seem like it's going to be it here. Oh, um, buybacks. They can't do that. doesn't exist. Like, That's not a mechanic. They can't do that. You know, once they're dead, they're dead. All they can do is respawn. 14 seconds until you have your oh. saber back. Five until you got your, your buy. So maybe spoke a little bit too soon. They aren't going to get those respawns. But they've got to be very careful with these next initiations. Yeah, I thought they would at least go for the inhibitor turret here. Rockon actually opting to tank the wave just to get that extra farm towards uh, Sivir, I believe. Makes sense to me. Maybe he's just gonna uh, let somebody else other than himself go for that farm. Um, but yeah, again, wants to minimize the amount of damage that his tower takes. And yeah, this is, I believe, yeah, this is Elder actually. So yeah, the um, Brooklyn here has soul. And they're looking for Elder Drake. If they get Elder, that's going to be GG. Uh, with the amount of damage that they have, unless, like, a Sivir doesn't have enough damage 
mainly with, uh, oh, hold on here. That is a very risky GP. You might want to, yep, okay, fair enough. Goes, Lissandra goes golden, makes sure that she doesn't die to her own TP here. Look for uh, very really low. Lissandra does end up getting the kill onto the rock on. They're really in a tough situation here. Very big choke point. Severe not able to find the auto attacks she needs. Mordekaiser are getting the kill onto the Lissandra, but Jax is going to find the kill back onto the Vi, and she's going to be careful here. Jax popping out his parry, going up against the Mordekaiser. Mordekaiser here in a really tough situation. It's a 4v1. He's got to get the hell out of there, but he just can't. Applying some slow onto the Jax, trying to stall for time here. If he can bide his time, he can wait for respawns. Just oh, keeping route. people off him. Oh, wait, maybe. Blast root place? Blast root place? No. no. He gets pinned. Yeah, Poppy will wrap up that kill onto the Mordekaiser. Hopefully he's stalled enough time to try and get all of his team to respawn here. Twisted Fate maybe going for the, yeah, trying to go for the blue card, not going to be able to steal the Jax's Elder Drake, unfortunately. But hey, I mean, Mordekaiser did stall for time, and we've got... We got, the, we got the Twisted Fate, we got the Rock on, we got the Severe, and the Vi is up now. So, like, it's stallable. But again, it's one of those situations where, yeah, the gold leads are significant now, and it's really hard to kind of get these things going. The Sivir, really strong right now, but, um, I mean, she's almost full build, right? So you gotta watch out. Oh, hold on here, I'm gonna have a bit of <laughs> well, bless you. In the meantime, I will discuss a little bit that Sivir, like you said, it is a very powerful champion at the moment, but these fights never go their way. Voice splitting her off the team and then just making it very difficult. Like, uh, even in that last fight, I, I noticed how the Ezreal is kind of kiting around. Ezreal even didn't really do anything that fight, which is kind of scary for the Saints because he was just getting in position to do stuff, and by the time he was in position, they already won the fight. Yeah. Again, which is contrary to the Sivir, never they're never letting Sivir get into that position where they're able to do stuff. So, they're, again, it just goes to show they just know how they want to take these fights from college, and they're taking them very effectively. Yeah, well, it's because if you look at the size of St. Clair College, right? Uh, cancel Sivir Mordecai is full build. TP, um, recall, by the way. Um, Ezreal with the ultimate cancel Mordecai's TP, so he's not going to have it back in time, and that's going to give them enough time to pour through, take the inhib, and just lay waste to the base of the Saints. Now, this could be the final fight we're seeing for this match. Mordekaiser is here now, finally. Kodita holding the gold card, gets poppies. Any follow-up are gonna go? No, they don't wanna commit for it just yet. The Saints have to play cautiously, they have to play carefully, because any slip up here could spell the end of the game. Another gold card going out, bringing poppy in. They don't wanna commit for it just yet, but they are turning spirit. their attention to the next turret. Middle is gonna go down. Sivir has, oh no! Did you see that damage? Sivir is so low, half forced to retreat, but that's giving an opening for Poppy to get into the middle line here, not even the back line, just wreaking havoc, but sent to Brazil, knocked back. Such a long flight for the Mordekaiser. He's finally landed, but he still has motion sickness after that chaos. They find the Vi and Mordekaiser on the side of Brooklyn College, and as a result, they also find the Rakan. It's just Kodino and creator Soa, but it's not anything they're able to do about it. They found their funnel composition, but they put a cork on it, and nothing is left to flow out as Brooklyn College drains the spirit out of St. Clair College. And that's another game for them taking the series 2-0. Yeah, very good execution on the side of Brooklyn College. Or, but no, it's Brooklyn College Brooklyn University? College. Brooklyn, Brooklyn College, College. alright. Um, very good execution. They played it really well. They were able to lock down, right? They had a lot of lockdown on their team with the Jacks, with the Poppy, and a lot of the fights that were taken by Sinclair College weren't in optimal situations, right? Mm -hmm. When you're playing as a Sivir, mainly against something like a Poppy, you don't want to be in those choke points, right? No. You want to be in relatively <laughs> no, no. open areas, because this way you have space to kite, and Sivir, she can kite pretty easily, and she, I mean, she has her Black Shield, right? She can block one whole CC ability, which is huge, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, I mean, Lissandra, you have to worry about her ultimate you have to worry about her root. You have to worry about uh, her going to stasis. You need to worry about poppy stunts. You need to worry about jack stunts. At the end of the day, what am I supposed to black shield? One of them. <laughs> That doesn't Black really Shield, narrow it Black down. Shield, one of them, and hopefully that's the one that you need to block to stay alive. But it is like navigating a minefield blindfolded and with stilts, um, which theoretically would make it easier to navigate. The it would because you have less surface area. Yeah, so but, it's, but if you fall over, 
No, then right? you're screwed. <laughs> exactly. And I think that's the perfect analogy accidentally by me. You know, if you're really good, then it's easier to navigate these fights. But if you're like the rest of us, you're going to fall face first into a lot of mines. And Brooklyn College did an excellent job laying out those mines and forcing St. Clair College to walk all over them. Taking the series 2-0 very convincingly as well. First game uh, was a lot more one-sided, if you ask me. The second game was a lot closer. The Saints found their footing and they were able to come together with a game plan that they were able to execute reasonably well. I feel like the funnel comp didn't go their way. Basically, everything we thought like of damage. wrong. Yeah. That was pretty much it. Basically, um, I feel like if they had a top laner that was a little bit more flexible in that regard, Mordekaiser did a great job splitting things and holding things down. But I feel like if the maybe this is not the right pick, but the, the idea of something like a Malphite, where you know that Malphite can relocate in the fight, start doing CC, and also tank up, and actually do a lot of damage. A I Malphite like or a like Gragas, that. honestly? Something like that. Yeah, yeah, but if it's not in their hero pool, then there's not much you can really do no. about it. Um, but League of Legends under our belt now. A 2-0 for Brooklyn College. Very well done to them as yep. well. Um, but... 3-0 for our Overwatch team, Varsity against University of Texas, Dallas. That was also a very close series. Very well played from both teams. Tomorrow, we have more League of Legends. I'm yes, sure you're just League of Legends. Seal all just a single stream. So it's going to be a lot more focus on that. Maybe we're going to be able to get some interviews, talk to players. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Only tomorrow will tell. But to wrap up the night, Gabe, tell me how you're feeling about things before we go home. I'm feeling pretty good. I mean, our team, it was a rough game. Mm -hmm. But I, I think they're gonna they're gonna go back on their replays. They're gonna see what happened. They, they're gonna say all they right. They bounce back well. Yeah, they're they're gonna all bounce right. back from this one. They're gonna learn. They're gonna adapt. And I mean, it's a completely new team. They didn't know what they were going up against. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, okay, cool. There's a Fedson's out, <laughs> and on this one, I can't move. This is fun. It's hard to do. Ish. With. But yeah, that's they're, they're gonna come back. But For sure. It, it takes some time. It's the same spirit. We always come back, and when we do come back, we come back stronger. And if we don't win. It's always entertaining. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, hope you found tonight entertaining, and I hope you find tomorrow entertaining as well. I've been Daniil, also known as Better McGee, and this has been Gabriel. Uh, this stream was only possible thanks to our sponsors, HyperX, Tim Hortons, Subway, the St. Clair College SRC, and the St. Clair College Alumni Association. So we thank you very much for making these streams possible, and we thank you for enjoying them. We also thank Danners and Matthias in the back and TJ for observing Overwatch for us tonight. But with all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in. We hope to see you tomorrow and have a great night. GG.